we're obscure reference i'm patrick i'm joined by austin we're here to react to some uh, dank trailers we got a lot to get through so we're probably just gonna jump right into it right here uh, all right do it ready to go let's let's freaking do it man let's do it dude who knew what this I had no idea what this was I... when you put it in there <laughs> still have no idea maybe you'll have a better idea on the other side maybe you won't is it a real thing that's being made? Something yes. I never felt oh my god. Oh Tell shit. Me, Hunter, could this be true? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is everything. It's, I don't know how to, like, I feel weird looking at this in such, like, a ridiculous oh, graphic, boy. graphical way after looking at real Bloodborne. Akira, love that. <laughs> Oh my god, it's wheelchair! Oh no, dude. That's awesome. What kind of, uh... <laughs> oh shit. Oh! Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, just get These are some sick moves you got. Okay. What? Oh. oh! The wheels of fucking cart? That's so cool. Oh, this is, um... You play Looking what's like face? General Grievous out here. Oh, this is cool. Oh shit, they got paycheck. It was so ridiculous. Whoever thought of this, wow. Oh shit. Is that the final boss? That'd be so cool. Oh shit, okay. There's no way this doesn't get canned, right? Nah, I think it's fine. They've been very public about know, it, starting it. They're working on it. Okay. So yeah, that's Bloodborne Cart. That that was, look, I I mean, love the idea. It's <laughs> so ridiculous for the game, uh, like such a genre smash. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really know how to deal with it. it. The graphic part kept throwing me off because I'm like, this isn't. It doesn't even look like Bloodborne. I mean, it does obviously, but you know what I mean. Yeah, Bloodborne's such a beautiful game. Gorgeous, some might say. Yeah, I, this is a project that this that they've been working on for a while now, and I don't remember how it started. I know there's a meme about like FromSoft making Bloodborne Cart or something, and I don't know how PlayStation One graphics got in the mix. It's not even PlayStation One yeah. graphics. It's like a step, like a half step below that. But yeah, um, I don't know. Somehow it just kind of kept going, and the joke never ended. And now we're here, and it actually looks really cool. So I don't know. The thing. The thing to me is just that uh, it, I mean, it gives me such Pokemon Urania vibes of like, mm. it's going to get all this hype and then the actual developers are going to catch wind of it and uh, say, um, I'm just going to DMCA you and you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. Or cease and desist. Yeah, and I can definitely see that happening at some point. But I again, this they've been very public about working on this, and no one's done anything yet. So, not to say it'll never happen, but it hasn't yet. So I don't know. We'll and it's see. gonna be true multiplayer. Like they're gonna have servers and stuff. I that's a really good question. I'd have to look into to really get the answer to that one. But I I would hope so. I don't want to just play against bots. You know. Yeah. I want to kill my friends in Bloodborne cart. Mm -hmm. That's the sentence I never thought I'd say. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, I just thought that'd be a, a fun little way to kick things off for tonight. You know, I don't have a whole lot to say other than I'm glad someone decided they wanted to make this and that it's happening and now it has a date. You gotta so. love gotta love the internet just taking a joke and running with it all the way mm -hmm. to the finish line. It reminds me a little bit of when Flappy Bird became a big thing and they made a Mario version of it. And, uh, oh, no, 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 wait, sorry. This was a No Man's Sky Flash-based Mario game. That got canceled very quick. What? It was like very, was... very. It, I don't even know if it was flash based, but it was web hosted somewhere. It wasn't like a game you downloaded or anything, but it was like a a two D, like space exploration. It was like Mario Galaxy, No Man's Sky, sort of a thing. And Nintendo shut it down mm -hmm. really quick, of course. So they changed That's it. Nintendo baby. They changed it to No DMCA Sky, <laughs> instead of No <laughs> Mario Sky. It's whatever. It was dumb. I. But that's I don't know why I'm thinking about that right now, but anyway. So yeah, that's that's Bloodborne Cart. Are you ready to actually jump into some real trailers? 
Some real trailers, he says. Yeah. Some. Re- okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. But okay. are we okay? All right. Here we go. Being a stuntman is the best job in the world. You're constantly being tested, just risking it all. I used to fly. Nothing's like it, man. <laughs> you never think about like uh, kid stunts. He had no concept of fear. No. I knew yeah. I was gonna be a That's a good point. I got the best job in the world. Lead stunt double for Daniel on the Potter films. Dave just seemed like a cool older brother. He would do the most dangerous physical stuff. We would do things no one thought was possible. What was nice about it was that they all grew up together 10 years on every film. But it was brilliant until it wasn't. I remember straight after breaking my neck, I said, there's no chance of coming back. Worst day in the film business that I've ever read. It is unfair. He shouldn't have had to do any of that. In my mind, Dave's indestructible. This terrible thing happened to Dave, but I don't want to talk as if his life is a tragedy. The way his life has affected the lives of people around him means that it is the furthest thing from that imaginable. Three, two, one, salvage it! Before our accident, everything was about being cool and being a stuntman. Now it's about being present. I have so much love in my life. All I needed a couple of fans. You got your mum? You know, I had lots of great friends, and I'm so lucky. I've had such a crazy life. Such highs and such lows. But I was able to find light in the darkest places. So, a couple weeks ago... There are some stills floating around, uh, Daniel Radcliffe with this guy, and uh, they're like, "It's you know he's executive producing this documentary." I'm like, "Interesting." And then they dropped the trailer like two weeks later. I'm like, "Interesting." So thought I'd put it in here. I was a little concerned. We were like halfway through there, and it's like, "Is this just all gonna be depressing?" <laughs> and then it, it turns eventually to what into what I was hoping it was gonna be. It wasn't just gonna be an hour and a half long pity party, but um yeah i don't know that looks really that looks charming and inspiring in a way that you would expect a documentary like this to be and i like that daniel radcliffe's so involved with this and is still working with this guy today i think it's interesting that the the trailer definitely has a very much like british humor kind of twinge to it where it's we'll see uh i don't know how like how many people you know british but you know like most of the how they cast all british actors and all that Mm -hmm. in harry potter like you can very much get a something that uh would be a little i I don't know what the right word is but like too far for an american audience not used Mm -hmm. to the british style of like yeah sarcastic like drab humor Mm -hmm. and this is kind of almost the perfect representation of that in a British guy who's stuck in a wheelchair and makes crash joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it seems like he's got a, uh, uplifting story. It's kind of like, you know, we were talking maybe two episodes ago now about the Sylvester Stallone, uh, documentary. Mm-hmm. And it seems like it's similar to that where it's like, it's a good, good enough, uh story of the like you know the downs leading to an up that uh, makes for a good documentary Mm -hmm. and so this could be a good one yeah yeah it definitely looks uplifting and inspiring you know as i imagine the stallone documentary probably is to an extent um and it's harry potter so it already has that um that crowd built that built-in crowd that might that if they're at all interested in behind the scenes stuff and like stunt double work and you know what's come because of that you know i could see this doing fairly well for hbo whenever they drop it mm-hmm. so yeah that's that trailer 
going into a completely different direction now. Into the lovely land of video games. Yes, dude, it's been too long. It's a scramble at the time. Okay, yeah, I think so. He asked for your story and your style. The books are loading in on that It's super weird. It's super weird to look at the bookshelf. I'm just too used to the old school. Oh, is that a new texture for that? I didn't even notice. I don't know if it's recent new, but it's new comparatively to mm -hmm. very old school Minecraft. Oh, this just looks like under. What is this? <laughs> He's like, look, ma, here's somebody that looked like us. Well, Ooh, stop motion. The chest that makes me, me. You got teleported to a land of love. Crazy to think All about how far my graph has come. For real. I can't help but feel like I've grown along with but the I game. But I wore a Minecraft shirt on the first that day of school. That must have actually changed my life. That made me who I am today. Me encanta explorar diferentes biomas. Minecraft has changed along with me. What is that animal? A bug. I don't know. <laughs> that does look like a muskox or something. Minecraft genuinely ended up pulling me out of that spiral. Me and Minecraft push me in the spiral. This game has guided me through long days. Happy trails and tales, everyone. Well, I was wrong. It was another inspiring trailer. <laughs> I, I mean, it really does put into perspective how far minecraft has come i mean mm -hmm. all the way back to when i first played it in alpha you know fucking like what i would have been in middle school so mm -hmm. same yeah. over a decade ago like yeah more than a decade yeah it would have been like 13 years ago at this point jeez at this point um oh my god <laughs> does that make you feel old yet? a little bit a little bit <laughs> that's why um, i drink i yeah i'm like you know take me back to the very first time i'm on youtube 14 years ago or whatever mm -hmm. it is and i see the first like c nanners video of oh minecraft God. in alpha and i'm yeah. like holy shit what is this crazy new game that's going on and i get all the pictures of you build your first house in my yep. first world and all the things i've done and made a dirt or wood how far or things have yeah how far things have come in that time mm -hmm. all of the crazy changes i mean you can think back to before food bars were a thing and you ate yeah. food to to grow your health before enchantment existed oh i remember all that like mm -hmm. now we've got like 500 different species of animal there used to be just like five yeah now we've got world bosses there used to be a time when you couldn't really beat the game and now you've got the ender dragon it's like you've got yeah the withered and you've got the new guy in the depths or whatever it's called i still haven't fought that guardian uh yeah not underwater? no not underwater but that is another one i'm talking about like when you go down to like the deep caves where it gets really dark mm. that blind guy that's super tough and can kill you with like yeah one shot and now we have negative uh coordinates that you can go into when you go into yeah. the depths yeah gosh i'm just thinking because like i you know i watched yogs cast i watched achievement hunter play minecraft all the time when i was growing up like when i was like even five six years ago right no, probably longer than that. But um, I was listening to um, just a brief clip on a podcast where um, Jeff on the Rooster Teeth podcast came on and was talking about his experience at Minecon. This was like 2018, 2017, maybe. He's like, they have this educational mode where you can like work and it's used in schools. And it's like, that was five or six years ago, whenever that was. And it's only gotten bigger. And it's yeah. only gotten so much better for so many different groups of people it's so inclusive and it's so universal and i think it, it just speaks to the power of what a fantastic game minecraft is like it's and the beauty of a sandbox right is right like they're saying you get to build your own story mm -hmm. yeah whether 
in the world or out of the world or both because it's all interconnected when you get social games like that mm -hmm. like you look at like the top 100 games of all time lists or whatever and you see like mario you see like you know donkey kong country or you know whatever is up there like the most influential games that changed everything and minecraft every time i hear minecraft towards the top of that list i'm like are, are you sure and i think about it and it's like no no that belongs up there yeah and uh, it's it's just kind of incredible how far it's come and just yeah you know i do have my complaints like you know minecon every year they're like we got three new animals we're only going to add one you vote on it and it's like why why not add all three i don't know but that aside like it's still one of the best games out there even if you know you've done everything there is to do to it there's still plenty you can do because it's all the limitation is your mind you know mm -hmm. so i yeah love minecraft good shit. can't wait for my next three week obsession with minecraft again yeah it's usually like five weeks for me and i can never play come it. we're kind of in the wrong time for it now because there's so many good games but when right. summer comes around next year unless they start announcing we'll be days right back into it uh, yeah absolutely all right so what have we got next Mm, I don't the remember. lovely DLC announcement. Woo-wee! Oh, partial nudity. Gross. <laughs> so the hour of reckoning has come at last. Rivers of blood and cries of agony. Whoa. I, I don't know who those people were. I don't either. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, no more. is this a boss? What remains is a true tyrant. Oh, Whoa. that's a weird head. Looks like a hat from Dark Souls. Mm. This is giving strong Bloodborne vibes. A lot of Bloodborne vibes. They Who did this to her? Up. Who did this to her? Who she is? We met her once, and so we never went back to her. <laughs> Can we, we just supposed to? I don't know. <laughs> Genuinely, I, I don't mean... know. <laughs> Our experience with that game is so fucking wild, dude. Like, I can't actually handle how ridiculous mm -hmm. our interaction with that game is. <laughs> We're like just blunt forcing our way through it, not actually exploring everything or understanding what's going on. Like, <laughs> made worse by the fact that it's procedurally generated. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, mm -hmm. so you you can't even be like, this is what you're supposed to do. Because it's not going to be the same every time. No. Yeah, and it's like, it, we got like more than halfway through the game. We're like, you can get a second class? <laughs> this NPC does what? <laughs> like, we just never took time to like explore or concoctions? learn. Concoctions? Wait, at the final boss, we learned what a concoction is? Right? Like that, that should have been like from the beginning. Like, oh, this is something. We'll keep this in our back pockets. Nope. Nope. <laughs> We're the worst. And I love it. <laughs> Here's the thing is like, you know, we talked about after we beat the game and we're like, mm -hmm. oh, it's catharsis to uninstall the game. Yeah. I have no doubt I'll be back to play that. Like oh. just sitting there. I'm like, yep, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Still no idea what's going on, but I'll come back to play some more uh, Revenant 2 for sure. Yeah. I mean, that was dropping the 14th, I think is what it said. So like less than a couple of weeks. But I, I don't know if oh, I'll jump shit. in. Oh, shit. I didn't even see that part. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think I'll be jumping into it at that point. But, like, I'm certainly... Yeah, 11-14. Holy at, shit. At some point, I'm sure I'll be jumping back in. Maybe build a new character, start that. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, that's just at a bad time for us. There's so much good... I mean... Huge, what, yeah. What, uh... Model for 3 comes out, like, the 11th, so... Oh, my God. Big fan of the old Remnant, but... MW3 has got my heart way more than that does. Mm. That's for sure. Just a quick tangent. You see the um, campaign's not getting great. Oh, a lot of man. love. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's embarrassing for them. I heard it was like, did I read that right? That it's only like four hours long or something? Yeah, three or four hours. That's fucking embarrassing. I followed this guy from IGN. He gave it... I didn't know he was doing the review on the campaign. He gave it a 4 out of 10. I'm like, damn, bro. 
Yikes. Homie just gave Spider Man 2 like an 8.5 a couple weeks ago. And it's like, oh God. Two spectrums, man. <laughs> so I don't know. But who's buying it for the campaign anyway? Yeah. I mean, it just, as much as they want to call it not a DLC, they just, it keeps looking more and more like one. And the problem is, I think on PlayStation, at least, it's listed as DLC. Hey, yeah, they listed it as DLC. Which so is now annoying. there's no trophies, there's no platinum. Or there's, there are trophies, but there's no platinum. And I know some people are upset about that. And it's fucking funny. Um, yeah. It's just a mess. Maybe we should uh, let this one cook as another Call year. As Call of Duty is. Right? I would not have complained if they were like, let's push this back a year. Yeah. It's almost oh, like no. BlizzCon's happening. I limited myself to just this, even though I might care about Overwatch a little more, but I don't have a lot of good things to say about Overwatch right now. <laughs> Other than it's a good game. Is it? Is this for an expansion, or what mm -hmm. is it? Yeah, it's a new expansion. I always just, like, I don't play WoW. I don't, I couldn't tell you much about the lore. But the cinematic announcement trailers for all their expansions are just so fucking good. Yeah. And I've seen some pictures from BlizzCon. Uh, Giving probably... Oppenheimer vibes? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, they're taking this seriously, seriously. Good for them. I think I'd maybe react a little bit more if someone teleported in on me. If you lived in WoW World? Especially in Orc. But if you lived in WoW, well, yeah, I guess so. You're here to tell me we don't get to hide. Is that it? You needed time. We stayed away. I stayed but away. time by itself heals nothing. You didn't just come here for me. It's the visions. You've seen them. I suspect many have lately. Do you know this is Blur that does this for Blizzard? Are you telling or asking? I'm asking. I... Someone. It I don't might know. Be is calling out from the heart of the world. They do a lot of these like cinematic video game trailers. Like a voice from a dream. They did the Knights of the Old Republic MMO trailers, if you remember those. Mm -hmm. Those Something were sick as fuck. Is coming, Anduin. Anduin. The world it's one letter away from Skyrim. Your light oh, again. My son. I'm not that person anymore. I have no light. Now it sounds like Anakin. Not after what I've seen. Not after what I've done. Uh, you know, it probably is Blur. I do a lot of stuff with Blizzard now that I look at it. You are not your past, Anduin. Whoa, orc guy, careful now. I trust I'm pretty you. sure you could take that blade, no problem. That dude's huge. He is massive. Man. He's got absolutely ridiculous armor. He's good. That's a neat looking sword too, I kinda like it. I'm just confused why it's so like they're getting worse. Adam explosion mm. graphic. Like why is it not something cooler? You're in a fantasy world. Yeah, do some with it. I mean Look. Of the trailers I've watched for this game, coming, they've never done an Adam I'll stand with exploding you. thing. Of course I will. But we were drawn here by the voice. Oh the voice. Who is it, Thrall? 
Who's calling out to who's, us? Who's the voice, Austin? I'm not sure yet. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> but I'm getting strong Destiny 2 the Traveler vibes. Oh, but man. that sword. Oh, was shit. That's someone. Okay. That'll be one hell of a boss right there. Yeah. Sorry, I get <laughs> okay. I don't play WoW, but I, I get a little bit horny every time I see the word saga. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man, I can't take that back ever. Okay. <laughs> that's out there forever. It is. I'm stuck with that statement existing. God damn it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie. I don't play WoW. I don't know what the fuck was happening there. Um, but I do know this. You know, playing a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen like I do, it's hard to play that game and not get into arguments with WoW players on which game is better. Or in the case of, what, two years ago, three years ago, when the great WoW Exodus was happening and everyone was jumping ship to play Final Fantasy, like, it's hard to not listen to people who've played that game give their thoughts and stuff. So I've heard of this giant fucking sword sticking out of the ground that blizzard seemingly forgot um because it's been there for like a decade now at this point it's been there for a hot minute and one of the things at blizzcon that they have they have this stand this little like decoration of this giant sword sticking out and uh with the text box what sword and so uh, there was some trend on twitter earlier too where they were saying they didn't forget like they're actually doing something Whatever. with it they forgot now. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. They definitely, you know, they only heard people talking about it, and they're like, "Well, maybe we should go back to that," because like, if there's one thing I know about WoW, it's that their story is a little unfocused. And what intrigues That's what me, happens? You make eighteen expansions over fifteen over, years or whatever. Oh, more than fifteen. They're twenty plus years at this point. But it's interesting to me now seeing the because the way they announced it, they had this trailer, and then they said, you know, we have this new saga, like, ooh. and um. The next three expansions are going to be a part of this um, saga. And so that intrigued me. So I thought I'd maybe we take a look at it. And I don't know. Because here's the thing. I've tried WoW. It didn't work. I know. I play Final Fantasy fourteen. It takes a lot of my mind share already. But if they add it to Game Pass, I don't know. <laughs> I might try it. Phil, you listening? It, I, it feels like they couldn't do that, though. I mean, as much as they want to be... A, they want to go game pass heavy it feels like mm -hmm. how do you how do you handle a wow world without the subscription like how do you how mm -hmm. do you pay for that to exist yeah that's the tricky part i have to look into what they do with um the elder scrolls online i think you have to pay a subscription for that still but i'm not sure um because maybe that game could, i i'd venture to guess you could be it could be like you don't have to buy an expansion do they still do is it free expansion subscription only now, or do you still have to pay for the expansion? I don't know, because traditionally... It said pre-purchase now, which makes me believe that you'd still have to buy it. Oh, So theoretically, yeah. they could go Xbox Game Pass. You don't have to pay for the expansion, but you do have to buy a subscription. I could see that. I could see that. I mean, traditionally, most games on Game Pass first party will require you to buy their DLC. Uh, yeah. So I don't know, but you, I think the way most MMOs make their money are off of, you know, microtransactions and then the subscription fees. Uh, if I had to guess, I don't actually know that. I'd have to look that up. But, um, yeah, so I wonder if it is just, you know, you have to, you know, you get the expansions, but the subscription fee is not waived. You still have to pay that because otherwise yeah, it starts at 50 bucks for the, uh, expansion itself. Mm, that's. I was going to say that sounds a little bit pricier, but I think FF expansions are a little cheaper than that. I don't know. Activision well, Blizzard's on this, something. Also, from what I'm seeing here, is there's a $90 version that gives you early access. So, mm, that sounds almost hard. double just to be able to play it, whatever, three days a week early, whatever it may be. Yeah, a lot of games are doing that. It's like, I, I'll just wait. But Yeah, I'll... but that's like way more. Like, if it goes mm -hmm. from like 70 to 90 on a game, like, you know... 20 bucks is a lot, but it's not almost double the cost. 
there was a there were a couple of games in September. Oh, it was Mortal Kombat and Lies of P both had something similar. I think Mortal Kombat space price, you know, seventy bucks, whatever. But if you want, if you paid like a hundred bucks, I want to say you could you you know got the DLC bundle and you got early access to it. So it's not double the price like this almost is, but it is thirty bucks more than what you normally would have paid. And I think Lies of P was something a little similar, but. So I, I, that's just kind of the trend of things right now, and it's unfortunate. But I, you know, I'm not going to pay for it. I'm not losing any sleep over not playing it a week early. And I know they have what like test servers for a while, so I'm sure some people could play this early anyway. So I, I don't know. I'm speaking out my ass at this point. But yeah, I just thought I would throw this in here. A couple other things at BlizzCon, Phil Swift said, or Phil Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, no! They've morphed. They've they've become one. Um, no, Xbox Daddy showed up and said the word StarCraft at BlizzCon, and they have a new Overwatch hero. Uh, it seems neat. Just thought I'd throw that in there because that is happening. He today. said he said the word StarCraft. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> not my words. I saw that in a tweet. He was what a great joke. advertising! Yeah, I mean, I could totally see him doing a new StarCraft at some point. We'll see. Oh, and a new Diablo expansion, but, but who cares? But why? Like, honestly, in the modern day, can you really make money on an RTS? If anyone could find a way, it's Blizzard. I mean, I don't know. I'm not... All I'm saying... Their uh, business acumen's rough. It is. Don't get me wrong, but people are still paying. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, I could see... Especially, like, there's an issue, especially, so, like... You know, there's a world of StarCraft, right? People who mm -hmm. like play that all day, every day. And there's yes. a lot of people in Korea who really like StarCraft. Yep. But are you ever going to beat Brood War? Like, realistically, are you ever going to be able to make a game for that audience, which is niche, mm -hmm. right? But they already have essentially the, the perfect version of that game. So if you make another one, you're just... you, Especially because now it's owned by Xbox, right? So you're going to go mass market. You're going to not uh catch the attention of your actual fans and no one else plays rts's so like it just yeah. feels like a not not something that needs to exist yeah i don't disagree i if they put it out i wouldn't play it probably but uh they did just put out a new age of empires what last year so i don't know i think there's still room for an IT rts and i think blizzard has that built-in fan base especially starcraft where they could pull it off not that I think we need one. I don't disagree with that. I think I think there's levels to it, right? And mm -hmm. I don't know, like, you know, to give it the analogy of the 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 movie world, it's like that's the fifty million dollar movie right there mm -hmm. is StarCraft, not the two hundred and fifty dollar million dollar movie. And yeah. it feels like Xbox is like, let's put out two hundred and fifty to million dollar movies. I mean, they're the Disney in this. I guess PlayStation would be Disney, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I follow. Yeah. They're they're really going for home runs, not uh, base hits. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. I don't disagree with that. I think I'm just very curious to see what their you know their structure is going to look like moving forward. Just because I know most of the studios that are at Activision, Blizzard, and King are Call of Duty support studios, and uh, so you know, like Toys for Bob, Ravensoft, that, those kind of studios. Like, get them off that. I want a new Crash. I want more Tony Hawk. You know that kind of stuff. You know. We'll see what moving forward. I could maybe see StarCraft just bubbling up in the in the background over the next ten years. I mean, I honestly want Activision to just get new IP, and mm. by get new IP, I mean make new IP. Yeah, they yeah. they've been uh, cannibalizing themselves for so long. Yes, and that like they've they got a couple of tent poles, but they they need new ideas. If they want to, I mean, now they are owned by Xbox, but mm -hmm. like you need new ideas to continue to breathe life into a company. And I think that's part of the reason why Activision went the way it went prior to being caught, bought mm -hmm. is they were so hyped on their own supply, but yeah. they were doing nothing new. And so, you know, you slowly erode away until you're nothing and you don't even notice. Yeah. Yep, I, I, I agree completely on that. I, you know, they've become a Call of Duty house. 
that's unfortunate. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, Crash, as a brand, is is you know to someone of our age or older mm -hmm. is relevant, but the gameplay itself isn't really. Like, I don't know. People liked the Crash Four when that came out a couple years ago. They also, uh, I just think they need new ideas, new IP. They need they need to move forward, not resurrect games or uh, IPs of a bygone era. Well, I agree they should make new and, IPs, but bring back its. And idea. you can put you can even put Call of Duty in that to yeah. an extent, mm -hmm. but Call of Duty makes so much money that it's it kind of breaks its own category. Mm -hmm. yeah there's a reason like, i don't know that i would say that there's anything that i mean warzone was like the one innovative thing call of duty has done in a very long time yep otherwise they are more like apple they're the biggest guy so they just take the feature that android put out a year or two years earlier mm -hmm. and then just port it to their device and do that and it's like that's great because you, you you've got you know you've got the advantage of being the biggest guy, guy on the block mm-hmm and so then the dudes who play Call of Duty all day, like me, you're like, oh my God, that's great. We get this feature now. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's the same thing we talked about watching the Modern Warfare 3 trailer. It's like you put out 16 remastered maps because you basically just admitted that you don't have the creativity to make a new map that's good. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter that we're pricing what should have been a DLC pack is 70 bucks. We know you're going to buy it. You know, it's just like Apple yeah. that way too. And exactly. It's like... It, it's almost commonplace now where it's like, you know, people that don't play a lot of video games will play Call of Duty <laughs> and people that don't really care about the tech space will have an iPhone. Like it, yeah. it it's like it's just common practice. Like the new iPhone's out, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get it. You know, call it new Call of Duty's out, I'm gonna go pick that up. Like it's just what it is, you know, that makes a lot of money for, you know not without reason, but there's you know, it makes you wonder, it's like, can't we innovate a little bit more? Well, Maybe and you would I, in my brain I'd wanna believe that you know, uh, them being bought by Xbox mm -hmm. means that, you know, new owners, new ideas, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, like, I mean, think about Bethesda, which is also owned by Xbox. Have mm -hmm. they done anything new? No. no. I mean, like, Starfield, in fact, one of the, the things that has been the detractor of Starfield is people have been, like, it's behind the times because Bethesda just can't get away from their own formula mm -hmm. of how things work and so it's holding their own game back especially when phantom liberty came out so close to that yeah. and that's like cutting edge of the rpg right so it's like i don't know that i can even have faith that xbox is going to turn them in the right direction because yeah. it's not like their own first party other first parties have done anything like that and I think Blizzard's an interesting compare. Or sorry, Bethesda is an interesting comparison. I because they bought them what like 2020, 2021 or something like that, um, and they're already well into production on stuff like you know Deathloop, um, Red. I was about to say Redfield. What's the their vampire game? Redfall. That's the one. Redfall. Redfall. Uh, they're well into production on that and Starfield. I don't know if we'll necessarily see. I don't know if you've necessarily seen the effects of Xbox owning them fully yet. I think. I mean, yeah, that's certainly true. I, I, but I want there's to also see... the part of like they had they had the I don't know if you saw this, but there was a news article that went out that mm -hmm. someone found in the Starfield code, um, code for building your own outpost station. Like mm -hmm. you could build your own station in space. And it's yeah. like again, it's more of just the like they're hitting the notes that they already know to hit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, what I want and, to like, see, you know. Like obviously, what's Beth Bethesda's name's what Skyrim? That's their big one. Do we know of? Are they? Dragon Age is not them, right? Or is it? No, Dragon Age is Bioware. Oh, they... Bioware! Shit, that's even worse, dude. Right. <laughs> is Bioware owned by someone? They're owned by EA, right? Yeah, EA. Yikes, dog. So it's okay. Mass Effect. We're in a bad spot. We're in a bad spot. In... <laughs> Like, somehow we've got a lot of great games, but not mm -hmm. a lot of great games at the same time. And that, like, the the big brands, and I even think you can put PlayStation into this category, is, mm -hmm. like, 
PlayStation found its formula and they just keep doing the same thing over and over again. They have, yeah. And that's where they get the like Marvel mantra of like they found the formula and they just do it. It's single player story based Third games. Third person and they just action based. Five story, of those yeah. a game. Yep, yeah, yeah. Five of them a year and they just keep doing that. Like as much as I praise Spider Man Two for as fun as it is, because it's a lot of fucking fun. It is another third person action base you know it's different than god of war and that god of war is more methodical with its combat spider-man's a lot more you know flow state and you know out of it's it's night they're two different but it's also IPs, the third but... spider-man they put out in four years or whatever it is like... five years yeah i mean it's yeah and they've got wolverine coming out next year which is probably going to be a little different than what spider-man is i assume but that's and that's just one studio that's just insomniac like you look at yeah, I don't know. Santa Monica, they got two God of Wars out in the last five years. And, you know, I'm not going to say they're identical because they're not extremely identical, but they are very similar, at least gameplay wise. Story wise, obviously. Well, I don't. This is the thing where it's like, I don't think, you know, they're at the stage that Marvel is now, but they're in an mm-hmm. earlier stage of Marvel where it's they like, absolutely are. they're still hitting with their formula. Mm-hmm. But eventually the formula is going to be like, all right, how about something new? Right. Yeah, and I think that's why they're starting to look into more live service games, and I think that's a mistake, personally, just because, you know, if you want to differentiate from third-person story-based games, like, that's not what, the way to go. Like, we're well, seeing... And you see what, if you see what's going on at Bungie right now, right. I mean, De- right. Destiny's not in a great spot. So Destiny's like... not in a great spot. Bungie's running support with other live service games. Like, they took a look, they take, they took a look at the um, Last of Us uh, multiplayer factions game that Naughty Dog's working on. They are like... I don't know about this chief. So it's a even from that standpoint, it doesn't look like uh, Sony has or PlayStation has their footing when it comes to live service games. And we've got Hell Divers coming out within the next couple of months, and you know that might be good. I don't know. I don't care really, but um, it is. I don't know. I I just can't help but look and it's like and think that's that's the route you're taking. Uh, all right, okay. You just put out a VR headset that's not selling. Okay. <laughs> okay so many but yeah i don't know we're in a weird spot with all three of the big studios for, for sure. sure all right well now that that tangent's out of our system we ready to move on yep oh, i didn't realize this next one was david leach that's interesting that's yeah no, yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> Are we ready to jump into it? Not sure that it's like a great marketing, you know, way to call your movie the Fall Guy when Fall Guys exists. And Free Guy came out like a couple years ago. Yeah. With a different Ryan, granted, but still. It's a movie. It's a movie about a stunt driver. Yeah. A stunt man. Damn it, these two Anyone people are attracted. I didn't approve him. You know that. Oh, Mbaku. You are That's my marble head, sorry. Person on earth I want to see. It slapped the shit out of you. I really could. And I'm open to that in a safer environment. <laughs> you can a ghost. No phone call, no text. It's not like I didn't want to apologize. You don't have to explain anything. It was just a fling. So how have you been? God, I hate that thumbs up stunt guy stuff. I'm the director. We're gonna set this man on fire. You're a stunt guy. We need to keep it super profesh. Profesh is my middle name. You said your middle name was Danger. Bad name. How do we do, boss? <laughs> really? Yeah. Holster that. Yeah, it's holstered. It's done. Oh, but yeah, wow. you, you never saw it. She holstered. Tom Ryder, <laughs> the biggest action star on the planet is missing you need to bring him back or jody's okay. movie is dead <laughs> why me you're a stuntman nobody's gonna notice you that's your job no offense i mean some taking <laughs> you find Ryder. so is that just the prologue to the actual actual story about trying to find him i'm not the hero i'm just the dog i think so not today you're not winston do some this tom we only need you back on set pal <laughs> If I had a nickel, man. Hope John's <laughs> watching. This might have happened in our last trip. This hallway reminds me of the dead body on ice. He was so dead, Gail. Oof. He was super dead. 
He has got himself involved with some shady people. I have it reminds me of the Inception hallway. A little bit, yeah. I see it. You're not wrong, John. Everything is a prologue to something. And not in a fun way. You can make it You hear me. Too dangerous. Got me stairs. I'll tell you the story after we're done with this show. You fall down, you get right back up. Oh, how far would you away. go for the one that you love? I don't know that I buy Emily Blunt and Jocelyn in this. <laughs> yeah, boy. Stunts. What are you doing later? Want to go to a beach somewhere? Drink a spicy margarita. Make some bad decisions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm really I mean, glad. John, listen, you're you're on an island by yourself because in that argument, I'm on Patrick's side. So. He sent me a video. He's like, skip to about 10 minutes in. And he thought it was doing his argument a favor. And it was it was a different argument. <laughs> and I'm like, I agree with the YouTube guy. <laughs> you're still wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That it movie, I, this... <laughs> This new era of Ryan Gosling playing these ridiculous roles is fucking it's awesome. It's the dude. best, dude. I love Ryan Gosling. Like, I like I I had no opinion of Ryan Gosling pre Gray Man, and then obviously that's the best movie. Right, time, obviously, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then post Gray Man, he's doing all of these just ridiculous, over the top roles, and mm -hmm. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's like you know you had Barbie, you had um. The other guys, what's the, oh, the one where he does with, uh, oh, what's his face? Oh my god, I'm gonna, Russell. Fucking, that's the one with Russell. Russell Crowe, yeah. Um, so you got that one, you got, you know, obviously you got one of the best movies of all time, played around 2049. And, uh, he's just, you know, all over the place. He's got the acting chops. This one just looks like he's having a little bit more fun. Um, not as much fun as he had with Barbie, I don't think, but that's, you know, just because of the nature of the movies, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm really glad. This also, this this movie gives me strong. Like, do you remember that movie from like, I, like two years ago maybe now with Sandra Bullock called The Lost City? Yep. Yeah, I got vibes. This that gives too. me <laughs> that, but like, actually, it could be good vibes. Yeah. Yeah, that's. God. Yeah, that that uh, that was a movie that happened. Um, I've thought about that movie more than I should have in the last like month or two. Um. But yeah, definitely got vibes of that from this for sure. I'm a little curious to see how they balance the romance stuff with um, what's her face. Yeah, it didn't really work in my opinion. Um, I mean, it was Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt, thank you. Um, I, it looks cute, but it's like, are we doing an action espionage thriller or are we doing a cutesy romance? I don't know how you're gonna balance that. How how is he gonna? Go well, back it just to doesn't feel like stuff? they have strong chemistry, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, I guess so. A lot of it did seem like, well, that's what's written, and they're both carrying the performances well enough, so I never, I didn't really notice it. But um, yeah, now that you mention it, you know, not as strong as chemistry as you might have, you know, the Notebook, you know, but you know, who knows? The Notebook. I don't. I've never even seen that movie, so I couldn't even like begin to tell you what the relationship was like on that. All I know is that Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams are in it. And apparently they have chemistry. Who knows? I haven't seen it either. <laughs> what I do know is I already put that on our calendar. So see us there March 1st. Heck yeah. I was really glad because when I saw the tweet for this, it was what discussing films on Twitter. They're like new trailer for David Leach, uh, director of Bullet Train's new movie. And I'm like, why would you put that there? Not, uh, people like all, some people like Bullet Train. I, don't, I wouldn't promote it with that though. <laughs> But if it's half as fun as Bullet Train looks, I think it'll be a good time. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely intrigued, for sure. I'm going to see this one, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. I, I got to give got to give my money to Ryan Gosling just playing these ridiculous roles because mm -hmm. it's a breath of fresh air in a uh, movie landscape. And Winston Duke, man. I don't think he'll be super important in this movie, but like I love him and everything he's been in, so...
Okay. I couldn't even tell you who that is, but Mbaku. Go him. Mbaku and Black Panther. He was one of the folks in Us. Remember that movie? Oh, you don't I like kind of movie I saw. Movies. Yeah, he's in nope. that one. He did. He was good in that one. Uh, what? 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 He... He's in both the Black Panther movies. I don't, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I haven't even seen the second one, oh, so that was actually kind of good. Hold on, we're gonna. We're <laughs> Does gonna that mean this. that you didn't like the first one? Is that where you're going with that? First one's third act is a little bit of a mess. All right. No doubt. The second act, or the second one, third act is also a mess for different reasons. Some are similar reasons, actually. Um, but yeah, we don't need to talk about it. I like a lot of stuff about Although it. Although we are literally going to go into a Marvel property right after this conversation. so. Oh, are we? Is that next? <laughs> oh, I, listen, I knew this one's coming because I'm, I'm a little hyped for that, but uh, oh, I don't even remember. Dude, okay, just my... Uh intro to this next one before you get into it that i have a special spot in my heart for uh the hot guy show that it came out of but man i'm not sure how this this is gonna go just gonna have to watch and find out can't believe he's in this. <laughs> I always makes me so happy. And not in a Hawaiian shirt this time. Yeah. Well, I didn't hate that, honestly. I did. <laughs> I hated how he... How his... Uh, it didn't feel as visceral as it did in the Netflix stuff in Hawkeye. Yeah. Agreed. This is different, though. I like this. Look. Don't be afraid. When I was a boy... Make America skate again. Come on now. I hate that. You that's can do better thing. than that. You have so much pain in you. 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 Have so much rage. Is that the mom from? That you kept contained. Oh, the Scorsese movie. Just casually giving oh, birth shit. against a tree. That dude just got murked through the head. Oh yeah. Ooh. You and I. That was that. Up until that chair kick, there was some great action going on. Wow. Right at the top, I have to give Disney mad props because that looks like a breath of fresh air in the landscape of the Marvel world. I mean, that was very clearly <laughs> a darker, more grounded uh, series in the world of Marvel, and I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to, you have to, like, I know, like, we all talk about the, you know, uh, being worn out by the Marvel model. And so, like, regardless of what, it, you know, what it is, you have to give them props when you see them actually seemingly. I mean, obviously, the show hasn't come out yet. So mm -hmm. we'll see when that time actually comes. But um, you have to give them props that this looks, I mean, you know, I, I've said this a couple of times now, but like my my um, trepidation with Disney now having the Deadpool series is that they start to pull the punches. And this gives me more hope that they're willing to let it be what it is, because that was I mean, they should some some real uh, grit in that fight. Those mm -hmm. that action there. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is their first TV MA show on Disney Plus out of Marvel outside of the Netflix stuff in period. And that's exciting for and me. And I don't really count the Netflix stuff. No, I don't either. Like I don't count it in their corner. Like it is on Disney Plus. It is there, but like now. it doesn't count. It doesn't count. That Disney didn't 
you know produce that as part of their larger mcu marvel studios thing um now this excites me because i know the daredevil show is going under a lot of you know not great stuff and that's part of a larger discussion but it does give me hope because i know this is supposed to lead into that i know daredevil is supposed to show up in this i don't know if we saw him in the trailer i honestly lost track for a second but i didn't see him i didn't either i thought i saw pictures floating around online of it but maybe not but this is what i was hoping for when they acquired daredevil and you know the other uh defenders street level new york hell's kitchen heroes uh, is that i want there to be that level of grit that violence that's there with daredevil with kingpin with the punisher if we eventually see him um and you're right it does lead back into you know do they keep what the spice that makes deadpool deadpool when they eventually you know bring that out um you know, and it looks interesting because they, they're relying because Echo is Native American. That's just part of her heritage. And it looks like they're really leaning into that here. And I, I really like that. You know, I had this thought when we were watching the trailer. I don't know if you saw me smirk, but I was thinking to myself, man, Killers of the Flower Moon walks so this, so this could run. <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm like 90% certain the, the mom, uh, Molly's mom from that movie is in this show. I thought I saw her just briefly. Which is really cool. She's a good actor, but um, yeah. And apparently, the showrunner is saying, "Yeah, we're giving her different powers in this one, just because her powers are basically Taskmasters, which is fucking stupid." So I'm here for it. Uh, my thing is, and I, after we heap all that praise on there, my mm -hmm. one detractor from this is, I think her character is just fucking boring in the Hawkeye. Yeah, she's like the fact that like the that she's in it at all makes not a ton of sense. But then, like. The whole subplot with the kingpin that that leads into this, she was just fucking boring, like, because she doesn't speak. Yeah, I mean, I'm I I don't disagree. I do think she is a little boring. I don't know if it's necessarily because she's you know deaf and mute and stuff. Uh, no, it's not because of that, but it's right. just yeah, yeah. like she doesn't have any characterization that makes her interesting. Yeah, you're not. And like, yeah. maybe you know, it's uh, you know, it's a issue because she's in someone else's show and when she gets around it show me it'll be centered around her mm -hmm. and so then you'll have more you know characterization for her and it'll, it'll do her justice but that's the one thing where i'm like you know that from what i've seen of her she didn't really like her character didn't make me feel a type of way mm -hmm. um and so that's yeah that's the one thing that gives me a little bit of pause for the show yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think of that Hawkeye show, she's probably one of the weaker parts, certainly. But because like you think about it, what what's her what are her traits? Right, she gets angry, she you know punches really well, and she wants to find whoever killed her father. Like that's really all there is to her. And, in a Christmas show. In a Christmas show, and you know even you know I feel like you could say more about uh, you know Kate's adoptive dad, the swordsman, in that show. You know, like there's she's definitely the weaker part of that and i'm very curious to see if they are able to expand on that um in this show for sure because like she's definitely of the marvel projects coming up this was when i was least interested in until i saw this trailer Me so too. I, I i'm glad that i'm intrigued to see what why they're putting it all out on one day uh, that's very unlike disney plus or hulu to do that with any of their marvel properties um uh, so i don't know we'll see I'm very curious. I'm intrigued. I know I've been burned by Marvel trailers before, but this is a really good at promoting their shit. Turns out, um, <laughs> uh oh, it's almost like it's almost like they know what they're doing or something. Yeah, I'd I'd have to say that. I guess if you count Deadpool, it would be second on my list of things that Marvel has coming out. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's it's up there for yeah. sure. Yeah, I definitely... Although that Secret Wars stuff that I heard recently, I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. God, that pisses me off. Is what it does. <laughs> it doesn't piss me off, I but I am hesitant. I don't so like I... it. In theory, I don't like it. It, it makes. But also, maybe. If they can make it work, because I've heard loosely what the plot of Deadpool three might be, and that might lead into Secret Wars pretty nicely. And if the if that's true and the rumor i've heard about the you know the stuff for secret wars is true i could maybe see that i can't work. imagine it leaks that far out right that's got to be not true uh, 
you say that, but like they get the general like story ideas down pretty. I don't want to say they want to they nail them pretty early on because they don't. But Deadpool. Well, 3, I don't. I, yeah, yeah, I don't necessarily mean like they don't know it, but I mean more like mm-hmm. they don't let it leak that far out. Like that doesn't feel like Marvel. No, I mean they don't let it necessarily leak. It's like people on the inside that know people, you know. Like it's never them being like let's drip feed him we'll show you know like the pictures of hugh jackman in the wolverine costume on set like that's definitely like we'll give him this we'll let him have it you know like but hearing the story behind what why wolverine's involves that's a different thing that they probably don't want leaked out there but some people know um or supposedly no i'm not gonna say anything because leakers are wrong a lot but a lot so that's why I'm trying. But that to... also, it also sounds like fan theory. Like it does. What from what I've heard about Secret Wars, it does, and it just it baffles me because it's like, on one hand, a lot of people would be happy, but then you have someone like me who's like, well, what did we build all this up? I don't know. For those of you who don't know, because we we're just kind of speaking around it, uh, the Secret Wars leak is that Tobey Maguire's Spider Man. And Hugh Jackman's uh, Wolverine are supposed to lead the two sides of the Secret Wars. Which is an absurd thought, but also, like, maybe it'll happen. I think there's a good chance it does happen. I don't want to say what the leaks I've heard about Deadpool 3, because that's a little bit more immediate. Um, But a lot of that does kind of have to tie into what Hugh Jackman might be doing in Secret Wars. And we've seen Toby in the MCU already, so like it's not a far shot to think that he'd show up again, you know. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot of good discussion we could be having about Marvel, and we'll probably be doing that next week when the Marvels drops. But um, I'm trying to figure out when this fucking <laughs> copyright's gonna go away. We're not even playing anything. Stop copywriting us. I know that's when it happens too. Co- we're literally just co- having a conversation, you fucks. Watching a promotional material for a show we're excited about. Let us promote your shows, Disney. Why is it always the good shit, too? Things that were like, you know what? This is actually going to be good. Yeah. Fuck, man. And then they're like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. How dare you like our thing? How dare you? Get, get copyright strike. Get fucking nut. No, I was going to go too far with that. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. Fuck it. We're just gonna move forward. We're good. <laughs> We're saved. Alrighty. One I sleep. I see strange things. Is it this shot? No. It gets worse. Memories. I shouldn't say it gets worse, but not memory. Oh, this, yeah. Yes. It doesn't look good. No, that bird does not look great. (laughs) (laughs) That is not. Oh, shit. Everything. Memorial Day, they're sticking to it. I'm going to need someone to explain to me why the apes had to learn how to speak full fluent English. Mm. For what purpose? I mean... Other than they want them to be able to have care, like people's voices that people know. I mean, that's probably a big part of it, right? 
Um, but do you not on like honestly to me, it feels like uh, they're betraying pieces of what made the original three so good. Like, mm -hmm. it feels like it's hurting itself with that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that. I I think that's certainly a good valid criticism. And that's part like, of Like this felt more like the campy Planet of the Apes mm -hmm. than it did the more recent 3 that this is supposed to be the fourth installment of. Right. And I think that leads into a lot one of my larger concerns with this movie is that it's not it's not Matt Reeves. It's someone else, you know. Yeah. It's. I mean, I'm not even sure we saw a single hand signal in that entire. No, I don't think so. Trailer. I think the idea here is to build up to where, and I know that's like a different continuity from what the original Planet of the Apes movies were, but, um, I wonder if it is their way of building up to where that movie, the original movie, eventually is, and it's the apes speaking fluid English and the humans don't, you know. Um. So I think. I fucking hate that. Like, I actually hate that as an idea. And that, that's just kind of how they, it is. That, that's the thing, but, like, I fucking hate it. I don't know. I always liked it. <laughs> it's kind of neat. I don't no, know. I don't I don't hate the that the first movie is like that. Mm. I hate that idea of building it up to that. Mm. Gotcha. Even though that they even though they are prequels to all of that. I don't like it. Yeah. I would have rather have just kept them weird. apart. And that's where it gets blurry for me, because as far as I know, it is different from what the original continuity is, because there's some weird fucking shit in the, in the original continuity. And we would have seen characters from that original continuity in the movies by now. Um, no, you know, not giving spoilers for 40 year old movies, but maybe there's time travel involved. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe who knows? We'll call it, uh, you know, the soft reboot prequel. Yeah, I can see if anything, this building up to and only building up to the original movie, and we're just gonna ignore the rest of the other original Planet of the Apes movies. I can yeah. see maybe them going for that. Um, that still feels a little odd, just because the way the apes look in this movie versus the original. Obviously, you're not gonna have cutting edge CG body capture techniques in whatever 1960 70 years that movie came out so they're gonna look different i think it's best that we just keep them separate um yeah and the like this somehow being the fourth movie in this series looks worse than two and three mm -hmm. i got that vibe too honestly. i would say it is about on par with one if not slightly worse mm -hmm. but roughly similar yeah yeah, I'd agree with that. I don't that. know how we went backwards. And like you think think about the third movie, right? Mm -hmm. Where they have this huge set piece in the like I winter prison area and how beautiful that looked compared to the jungle slash kingdom area that they have in this one. You're like mm -hmm. this is night and day, like not even kind of similar. It it really is. This was like you get like the naturalistic view of the original of the last trilogy where it's a lot of it I could see being filmed on location. Whereas this it's like Yeah, they literally were out there. This looked like it was like filmed in the volume or at least on a on a green screen set. Like it did not look and nearly up to the caliber of the last one. Made even worse by think about the fact that we watched the creator on a much smaller budget do much better jungle scenery. Because it like was shot on location. Better. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. God, it's I, like. Baffles me why we don't just stick with that, you know? Like, I, I get it's cheaper, but mm, even then, I don't know. Well, part of the thing is, like, they had to build brand new camera technology to build, to make two. Like, yeah. to actually be able to shoot that movie, they had to, re they had to build new tech. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's, you know, an undertaking. But we've already done that part. So, like, yeah. just tread in the steps of what's come before you mm -hmm. yeah for real and i i can't help but wonder i i hate bringing this up because like it but it is a factor that i don't know if this movie was in production before disney bought fox i think it might have been the early conception phases but it's a factor that this is also being worked on by folks at disney so I, you know maybe they they had something to do with that and i don't know 
it's it's hard to say where i don't think we've seen nearly enough of uh just from this brief glimpse but i am concerned i've, I've been seen concerned enough to be beginning. concerned i was concerned even when they announced it because it's like how do you touch a damn near perfect trilogy like i don't know we'll have to wait and see do you do you happen to know okay first of all do you know who the director of the movie is Oh, like just off the top of your head. I just looked it up. It's Wes Bell, but I don't I couldn't tell you what yeah. he's done. So okay. So I've I'm looking at his entire directorial history. Mm -hmm. It's two movies that don't even have a photo on IMDb because they're shorts. Mm -hmm. Then he does another short called Ruin, I've never mm -hmm. heard of. And then he did the three Maze Runner movies. That's his entire discography as a director. Yeah. Yeah, I have looked him up before and I remember reading that and just yeah, because I knew. And that's who they put in control of the movie to take over after two Matt Reeves movies. Which, it doesn't matter where you rank Matt Reeves among directors, mm -hmm. there's going to be a huge gap between those two people. Yeah. Like, this is, whether Fox or Disney, this is, like, the epitome of you put the person who has never made... um like big creative uh like passion projects and you install them in your movie so you as the studio can control everything that happens yeah yeah for sure i get that vibe a little bit and you can throw the argument out there it's like even the guy that directed the three hangover movies did the joker you know it's like you know there's always a potential there but it's like i don't know yeah but so here's where i would even with just like that one hangover one is actually a good movie like right. regardless of what you want to say mm -hmm. about two and three hangover like one's it, fantastic. i think that's kind of like looking back having now seen two and three but hangover one in and of itself is a good movie mm -hmm. and so like they're different in that the joker is you know like a very serious movie but he clearly had directing chops right i'm not sure that this is like you know, everyone slated Wes as the next big director, and so they <laughs> put him into a big budget movie to to really give him his test. That's Ooh. not the vibe I'm getting from this. What's the gap? It's a six year gap between the last Maze Runner movie and this one. That's you know, it's not even like I don't know. Did someone see the 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 last Maze Runner movie and think this guy's got the sauce? He's got it. Apparently, he was a graphic artist. Graphic which, artist. Again, because huh? so he's got a bunch of... He's got 25 credits in the art department. How does this movie not graphics. look better? That's what I was going to say. How is that where you come from and your movie looks like that? <laughs> Jeez Louise, dude. Uh, I, I, he's got 12 in the visual, visual effects department. I don't understand. I don't understand. I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. I want this movie to be good. I never want to be that guy that's like, I hope this movie fails because it's not Matt Reeves. But man, you got to give me something to work with, coach. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm concerned. Like, I'm there day one. And I'm concerned even more because of the fact that I love the other movies so much. And just as we talked about with the Hangover movies. Mm-hmm. Like, you can ruin the reputation of your movies. Yeah. yeah. Or your series, I should say. It's it's quite doable, especially with, you know, every time you decide to make a new one, that you run that risk. Um, but I to talk about the actual trailer itself, like the contents of what we saw in that. It did, just briefly, because obviously we're both concerned about this not being great. But it did look like, from what I've heard, like Wikipedia is not actually listing the character's name, but I do think that is Cornelius in the lead role there, who is the main ape guy in the original movie. And it, I got Dr. Zayas vibes from the orangutan as well. Um, if John were here, he'd be like, yeah, I don't know, that's Dr. Zayas. He appears in movies, blah, 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 because he's actually watched the old movies recently. <laughs> and I haven't. But I definitely got the at least those two characters uh, vibes from what we've seen here, and I don't know if they're actually that for sure. So don't be like. So Cornelius no. is Owen Teague is playing Cornelius. That is Cornelius. Wikipedia is fucking yeah. out of date. Um, because all I knew about this going in is that William H Macy is in this movie somewhere. 
and I think that's perfect that I don't know who he's casting. Yeah, he's currently unnamed. I my so even the story itself, like if you want to, you want to dig into that part of it. Mm. We had the child joins the the chimps storyline. The last that's a thing even. that already existed. In the last one, even. So like. And we also, I mean, obviously there's not that this is something you're ever going to get rid of, especially in this world where the humans are mostly gone. Mm -hmm. You have the like ape versus ape. We already did all that too. Yeah. Like the, the catharsis of the third movie is that Caesar, it, he leads the apes into the new world where they've gone free of the um ape fighting as well as the fighting with the humans and they're mm -hmm. charting their own path so again it feels like you're gonna very easily tread into territory where you're gonna stomp on all of what the previous movies have put together yeah you gotta be able to justify just why exactly we're having a new conflict here why exactly we're ju justify this new movie for for us because the last trilogy did end things like you said on a really good note um, quick aside, you remember that part in the third one where Caesar's in the jail cell and he's just looking around at the other apes that are in the jail cells and they're all holding up the apes together strong sign. Remember that? Oh my god, dude. I got chills thinking about that. <laughs> so good. That movie is good, dude. There, That movie has issues. So good. But oh, in terms sure. of like theming and like cathart, like a bringing together the trilogy, mm -hmm. fucking great, dude. There's that one ape in that movie that speaks like really fluent English, and there's a couple of moments. He's annoying. He fucking got me out. It's so good. There are a couple of moments. That he's just funny. Made me there's moments loud. where he's funny. I'm not trying to like say, <laughs> oh but like God. he's also fucking annoying. And I was I getting won't. vibes from the orangutan right there. That was like when that he came on screen, I was like, oh fuck. Yeah. Well, if he is who I think he is, he's definitely more of a scientific mind. He's a little bit more smarter. So I, I we'll we'll have to see. I could be completely off base with that, but I don't know. I'm hesitantly, I'm hesitant. I was going to say hesitantly optimistic, but I don't know if I'm optimistic just yet. I need to see a little bit more, but I'm well, definitely going to watch it. This makes me want to watch the actual good Planet of the Apes. I know. Movies. So bad, dude. So, I want to watch them so just bad. Just talking about it, like, dude, it's been so long since I've seen two or three. It's been like... I don't think I've seen three since in the theaters. I didn't see it in theaters. I watched it like a year, maybe a year but and a half ago at this point. I need to watch it again. The crazy thing is, like... When did that movie come out? I mean, that was a couple of years ago at least now, right? Oh, uh, you're going to make me look this the up. Hold on. War of the, for the Planet of the Apes came out in 2017. So that was 2017. six years wow. ago. And I still have very clear ideas in my head of what mm -hmm. happened in that movie. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it's a fucking... I've seen it one time and I remember that. That's how you know like, that's a memorable movie. Yeah. There's a shot in the second one um when they're having like their final battle i think and there's like a monk there's like a, a human riding on a horse and then a monkey kicks him off and then jumps on the horse and he has like a gun and he starts shooting at people and it's like a single shot following this monkey on this horse and it's it, that's stuck with me it's like man the filmmaking in this movie alone is phenomenal mm -hmm. god i need to watch that again it's so good can't believe john hates apes <laughs> I'm only firing shots because he's not here, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. So, yeah, I think that about does it here for us with this uh, pulse fingering. Didn't like how that was phrased, honestly, but I committed to it. You phrased it yourself, which is what makes it even better. Yeah. So thank you for joining us on this brief little journey. I say brief. Um, this journey through these new trailers, these hot drops uh, of stuff coming down the pipeline eventually. Uh, this has been Fingering the Pulse. I am Patrick. That's Austin. <laughs>